Some 60 senators took part in this conspiracy to assassinate Julius Caesar. Most of them had various uh, political, economic, and personal motivations for killing him. But one thing they all had in common was a personal hatred for Caesar and a fear that he was going to make himself a king again. Most of these men were, in, 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 in fact, political enemies, and on any other given day, they probably wouldn't have had anything to do with one another. But this was not any other day in their view, and, and they all agreed that Caesar had to be stopped as soon as possible. There was only one man among them who really had the appearance of or, or the reputation for honesty and who could be thought without, without absurdity of, be, of acting in the interest of the common good of the Republic as a whole, and that was Marcus Brutus. Brutus seems to me to be really a kind of Republican idealist who was pushed into this conspiracy uh, by a group of domineering friends and allies. They constantly reminded young Marcus that he was a descendant of Lucius Junius Brutus, who had expelled Tarquin, uh, thrown off the shackles of monarchy, and helped found the, the Roman Republic. They reminded him of his ancestry from that Brutus, that Brutus who killed the tyrant and drove the tyrant away, and they, they encouraged him to, to take up that mantle and help them expel this new tyrant of Julius Caesar. The, the plan was a simple one. Caesar was going to be lured to a meeting of the Senate at Pompey's Theater, which is where the Senate was meeting after the Senate House burned down in 52 BC. Only senators would be allowed inside, and so Caesar would not have his customary bodyguard. Uh, furthermore, because the senators were wearing their togas, they would be able to easily conceal the daggers, uh, which were their weapon of choice. Now, Caesar had been planning an invasion of Parthia in order to reclaim the standards lost by Crassus and avenge Crassus' death. And he had planned to depart for the expedition on the 18th of March in 44. So the senators knew that they had to act quickly. Uh, and so it was decided that the 15th of March, or the Ides of March as they are known, would be the date for the assassination. Caesar had been previously warned by a soothsayer uh, to beware of the Ides of March. And he was further anxious and agitated because his wife Calpurnia had the night before had a series of nightmares or dreams in which, uh, in which he was assassinated. Uh, so Caesar was at first reluctant to leave his home on the Ides of March. Um, and if it were not for the intervention of Brutus, he probably would have stayed home. So Brutus and, and several others came to his home and persuaded him that uh, there was urgent business in the Senate that, that needed his attention and that only he could do so and that it would be uh, unmanly for him to hide away at home because of some soothsayer. So Brutus leads uh, Caesar to the Senate. Uh, Caesar enters through some back door. Uh, he takes his place uh, at the front and he requests to see the petition that, uh, that they've drawn up and, and which requires his attention. The senator who brings the petition forward uh, hands, it, hands the petition to Caesar and then grabs him by the cloak and holds him in place. While he's doing this, another senator named Casca sneaks up behind Caesar, takes out his dagger, and attempts to stab him in the throat. Caesar understands what's going on he screams out, uh, Casca yells for the other co-conspirators to come and help out. Uh, and at the word of Casca, they all descend upon Caesar and they begin sort of violently and repeatedly stabbing at Caesar. Caesar emits the, the blood and confusion. He tries to escape. He runs away, but he trips over his toga and he falls down where he's repeatedly stabbed again. And all he can do in the end is cover his face and die in a pool of his own blood. It was later determined by doctors that Caesar was stabbed 23 times during this event, uh, but it was one single blow to the heart which ultimately killed him. In the later legends and stories surrounding the assassination of Julius Caesar, uh, there's often a depiction of Caesar 
in anguish as he recognizes young Marcus Brutus as part of this conspiracy. He, he, he's supposed to have said something along the lines of, and you too, child, or in Shakespeare's immortal verses, et tu, Brute. None of the earlier sources have anything to say about this, um, and it seems likely that these, these, these sayings, however dramatic, are, are fabrications. Likewise, for the, the, the supposed saying of Brutus, so Brutus supposedly stood over the dying body of Julius Caesar and said, Six semper tyrannos, right? Thus always to tyrants. Uh, this too is likely a fabrication. Uh, what the sources from the time tell us is that the senators, the co conspirators, uh, quietly marched out of the assembly. Uh, they went out into the streets and they proclaimed that they had killed the tyrant and liberated Rome. Uh, what they did not expect and what they did not anticipate uh, was the reaction from the people outside. Uh, they were not met with applause. They were met simply with stunned silence. The assassins all went home. They locked their doors, shut themselves inside, and they slowly came to realize that their actions uh, were going to have terrible and violent consequences. Nearly all the co-conspirators fled Rome uh, after the assassination, fearing retribution from the people. And the civil war that followed ultimately destroyed what was left of the Roman Republic. Thank you.